All right, so uh, let us continue with the, uh, with, the, with the proof of Zalkman's lemma. Okay. So, uh, so basically what this lemma is about, it is about uh, uh, characterizing uh, non-normality of a family. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, so, so I begin with, uh, uh, I begin with a family uh, script f of meromorphic functions okay and uh, i am assuming that the family is defined on this domain d all right and i assume that the family is not normal okay then as uh, the non normality uh, will manifest at some point okay uh, the family is not normal if it is not normal at at least one point in the domain and how do you how do you get that non normal point uh, that is exactly what Zalkman's lemma is all about. So, you see uh, what it says is that you can find the sequence of points in the domain converging to this point z0 which is the so called uh, which is the point of non-normality non and uh, you can find these uh, uh, decreasing sequence uh, of radii uh, positive radii. Uh, so, that you know if you take uh, uh, and, you, and, and, in, and you will be able to find uh, uh, see the fact that the family is not normal uh, means what? It means that the, fa the family is not sequentially compact, uh, normally sequentially compact. I mean our definition of normal is uh, 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 normally sequentially compact and that is the correct version of compactness for us. Okay? Uh, when you are looking at a family of, uh, when you are looking at a family of uh, uh, analytic functions or meromorphic functions, the correct version of compactness is uh, normal sequential compactness. That is given every sequence you should find a normally convergent subsequence and when when you say a family is not normal what you are what you are saying is that you are saying that uh, uh, you are ju you are just saying that uh, uh, they, they, there is there is a sequence for which you cannot find any uh, normally convergent subsequence okay and uh, you have to and Zalkman's lemma tells you that you can find such a sequence and that is a sequence here fn uh, you can find this uh, sequence, it is a non normal family in fact, uh, 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 the sequence itself forms a non normal family. So, that if you take the members of the sequence and then you take the corresponding uh, zoomed functions. Okay. Uh, so, g n is the zooming of f n centered at z n and uh, with the magnification factor 1 by epsilon n. Okay. Uh, then this zoom family converges normally on the whole complex plane uh, to a non-constant meromorphic function g okay? and the point is that uh, uh, the non-constancy of the meromorphic function reflects in the fact that its spherical derivative is not 0 because you know the moment the spherical derivative of a meromorphic function is 0 it means it has to be constant. All right? So, this non-constant uh, no, the non-constancy of g um, as a meromorphic function uh, is, is, is further you know fixed by this fact that the spherical derivative at the origin is 1 and all the spherical derivatives are bounded by 1. Okay. Uh, so, this is Zalkman's lemma. So, the point about this lemma is that the, the family if, if a family of meromorphic functions on a domain is not normal, it gives you a non-normal point z0 and it gives you a non-normal sequence in the family which violates normality in a neighborhood of z0 that is the whole point all right. and I have explained to you that uh, uh, I have explained to you what happens if the family were normal. If the family were normal what would happen is that no matter what kind of uh, what, uh, what z0 you choose and the sequence zn you choose like this and you choose these, uh, these any, any radii epsilon n going to 0, okay, the zoom functions will always converge normally to a constant meromorphic function. I mean to, to the constant to a constant function okay the norma so the normality is the normality of the family uh, will tell you that always the zoom functions will be constant and the normal the, the non normality of the family is reflected by being able to find if a, a sequence for which the zoom functions do not converge uh, to a, uh, normally to a, a constant function but actually they converge normally to a non constant meromorphic function okay so it is the limit function that matters. Uh, if, 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 if it is normal, uh, the zoom functions will always converge to a constant. If it is not normal, I can find a situation where the zoom functions converge to a non-constant meromorphic function. 
that is the whole point. Okay. So, uh, so let us let us see a proof of this, the proof is, uh, uh, is tricky. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, you know uh, uh, the reference material, uh, the, uh, uh, the textbook that I am following is that of Gamelin okay. uh, and, uh, 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 and the proof uh, as it is mentioned that is, is tricky as you will see. So, uh, so I, I will make a couple of reductions. The first thing is that uh, you know uh, what is given to me is that the family is not normal okay. and now you know we have already proved Marty's theorem which is a characterization of normality. Namely, it says that a family is normal if and only if you know uh, it the, the uh, if you take the family of spherical derivatives that is normally uniformly bounded. Okay. So, uh, recall uh, if you take a family of analytic functions okay, the condition that, that that family is normal that is that it is normally sequentially compact is by Montel's theorem uh, the equivalent to the the family being normally uniformly bounded and if if you consider meromorphic functions you get the analogous theorem which is Marty's theorem which says that the the condition for normality is that the uh, the family of spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded. So, uh, spherically uh, the, the spherical derivatives being normally uniformly bounded is equivalent to normality of the family. So, the family is not normal you have a violation of uh, the the bounded normal uniform boundedness of spherical derivatives and what does that what does that mean it means that there is a compact set on which you know uh, the spherical derivatives uh, this the spherical derivatives can become unbounded so this means uh, by marty's theorem you can actually find a sequence of points okay and functions such that the corresponding functions at those points the spherical derivatives go to infinity plus infinity okay so this is so that that's the first step so so let me write this by Marty's theorem there exists a sequence uh, uh, wn uh, tending to w naught in d and functions uh, fn uh, in the family f such that uh, uh, f n uh, hash of w n goes to plus infinity uh, and w n are in a compact subset of t. Okay. So, I, I can find uh, I can find this just because of Marty's theorem because Marty's theorem says that you know normality is equivalent to uh, uh, the spherical derivatives being uniformly bounded on compact subsets. Okay. Fine. Now we'll make a couple of reductions. What we'll do is for for uh, for convenience we'll assume that uh, uh, you know W naught is actually the origin. Okay. You assume W naught is the origin. And how can you do that? You can do that by simply translating the domain to uh, uh, so that you make W naught uh, the origin. So, you translate the do domain by minus W naught, you will get a new domain and you look at the functions there, the translated functions. So, without loss of generality what you can do is you can assume that W naught is the origin okay? and that is one thing and the second thing is that uh, you can also assume uh, that the, the moment you assume W naught is the origin, so origin is a point of D. Okay. Then of course, there is a small disk surrounding the origin which is also in D because after all D is an open set and you, as, you, you by, by, by using a scaling transformation you assume that the unit disk along with the boundary is also in D. Okay. So, these are you, you scale the domain I mean you scale the domain and you translate the domain so that you can assume without loss of generality that uh, the compact set you are looking at where you got this sequence W n is actually the unit disk. Okay along with the boundary unit circle and uh, the, 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 the sequence actually converges to the origin. Okay. So, uh, we will make these, uh, these uh, assumptions without any loss of generality. So, we let, so let me write that down uh, without loss of generality uh, we may assume uh, 
uh, w not equal to 0 and uh, 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 mod z less than or equal to 1 is in t ok. So, so for this all you have to do is that you have to translate d by minus w naught and uh, then you have to scale d suitably so that the unit disc uh, uh, which is a neighborhood of w naught equal to 0 uh, is uh, inside d all right fine so you can you can do this so so you see my picture is now like this so i have uh, so here is my um, i think i'll have to uh, okay so let me go down so here is my picture so so i have uh, so this is the complex plane and i have this uh, this is the origin so this is uh, the unit disk this is the unit disk and uh, well uh, this is inside d so you know your your uh, uh, your your domain d is it contains the unit disk so this is uh, d and uh, well this is the z plane okay uh, and of course there are these so there is the sequence of points uh, wn uh, wn plus 1 that is tending towards uh, the origin ok and and what you are given is that ok fine. So, I have this now what you do is that you <coughs> uh, 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 so the, the the tricky thing is that uh, so you know what I am looking for I am looking for I have to extract this sequence z n ok uh, which goes to z naught. Uh, and I have to extract this uh, the sequence of functions which uh, uh, you know uh, which have this property that the zoomed functions ok uh, they converge to a non constant metamorphic function. So, you see the trick is the following. So, what you do is you you put uh, put uh, R n to be the maximum over mod z less than or equal to 1 of f n hash of z and then you you multiply it by 1 minus mod z ok. So, you do this. So, this is the tricky part the trick is you see uh, see what is given to you uh, is these functions f n hash the spherical derivatives of the of those uh, f n hash is just the spherical derivative of, of f n ok. And of course, you know spherical derivative is continuous mind you the spherical derivative of a metamorphic function is a continuous function it is a continuous non negative real valued function ok it is a it is a it is a positive function ok at worst it can be 0 right which which is what happens if the uh, if the function is a, a, a is a constant ok. But the point is that uh, you mind you the spherical derivative has no problems at uh, at poles when the when the metamorphic function has poles there is no problem with the spherical derivative unlike the usual derivative the usual derivative is not defined at a pole because it is a singular point. But a spherical derivative is defined at a pole and we have already seen that if it is a pole of higher order then the spherical derivative is 0 if it is a pole of uh, order 1 namely a simple pole then the spherical derivative is 2 divided by the modulus of the residue at that pole ok. So, uh, the spherical derivative is a nice continuous function ok uh, post, uh, non negative real valued function and you are looking at this function on this domain mod z less than or equal to 1 which is a compact set. So, if you are looking at a continuous function on a compact set a continuous real valued function on a compact set you know the function is uh, of course you know it's, it will be uniformly continuous and it will attain its maximum and minimum therefore this maximum is is well defined ok and the point is that you see what is given to me is that these fn hash they 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 become larger and larger ok uh, at points which are getting closer and closer to the origin you see as n tends to infinity wn converges to 0 ok that means as n tends to infinity wn goes closer and closer to 0 and what is fn hash of wn that is going to infinity that means fn hash at attains large values closer and closer to the origin as n becomes large all right. Therefore, uh, so you know uh, what one does is that it could happen that the maximum uh, the, the maximum values of uh, 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 fn hash could also be taken close to the boundary ok. But if you go close to the boundary this quantity becomes very small if you go close to the boundary of the unit disc the quantity 1 minus mod z will become very small and 
uh, that will offset this uh, 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 the value of f n hash uh, uh, at, at, at that point ok. That is the re in heuristically this is the reason for multiplying by 1 minus mod z ok. Uh, instead of just con considering the maximum of f n hash 1 minus uh, f n hash of z. So, you mind you 1 minus mod z is also a continuous uh, it is also a continuous uh, uh, you know real valued function uh, non negative real valued function ok uh, inside the unit disc. So, there is there is no problem about it ok. So, th the product is of course, uh, continuous real valued function. So, there is a it has a maximum ok. Now, the now you have to make a series of we have to make a series of uh, observations. The first thing is uh, suppose uh, uh, Zn is uh, such that uh, mod Zn is less than or equal to 1 and Rn is attained at Zn. So, Rn is Fn hash of Zn uh, times 1 minus mod Zn ok. So, uh, Rn which is the maximum uh, is attained at some Zn ok. So, look at that Zn. So, and this is a Zn that I actually want uh, or probably a subsequence of that as you will see. See the first thing is note that you see, uh, uh, see R n uh, is uh, is greater than or equal to uh, you know f n hash of uh, 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 w n into 1 minus mod w n. This happens because R n R n mind you is the maximum of f n hash into uh, 1 f n hash of z into 1 minus mod z. So, if I put z equal to w n, so, so uh, the maximum value will always be greater than any of the other values. So, I will get this, but then you see uh, uh, you see as uh, n tends to infinity you see this goes to 1 ok, because w n tends to 0 and this fellow goes to infinity ok, uh, because that is the original assumption the the the, uh, the f n hash the spherical derivatives go to infinity ok. That is how we pick the sequence w n because it was violating normality violating the conditions of Marty's theorem ok. So, you see so what is happening is that uh, this will tell you that you know r n will tend to inf plus infinity. So, the so these r n's are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger ok that is something that you have to understand first. Now, uh, uh, now you look at uh, now you look at this uh, 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 so, you know if you look at this uh, 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 definition of Z n ok, what it will tell you is that the F n hash of Z n will also go to infinity. Because you see uh, if you take R n this is F n hash of Z n times uh, 1 minus mod Z n and this is certainly you know uh, greater than uh, this is less than or equal to F n hash uh, uh, Z n because you know after all 1 minus mod Z, Z n is less than or equal to 1 ok. So, uh, so this going to uh, infinite plus infinity as n tends to infinity will imply that uh, uh, the f n hash of z n will also go to in plus infinity ok. So, so this implies that this goes to infinity plus infinity as n tends to infinity. So, what you have done is you 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 got this uh, from the sequence w n which goes to 0 to w naught you 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 cooked up this other sequence z n ok. And uh, the point is that the uh, the the spherical derivatives at the z n's also go to infinity plus infinity just like the spherical derivatives at the w n's go to uh, plus infinity ok. But the point is that of course, this this the sequence z n that you have got that need not be convergent it is just a sequence ok. But anyway it is a sequence inside the unit disc and you know uh, the unit disc is compact sequentially compact therefore, there is a convergence of sequence and therefore, without loss of generality you can assume that you know this sequence Z n is actually convergent ok. So, uh, so we will make that assumption without without loss of generality we assume z n converges to z naught with uh, you know uh, z naught also of course, in the unit disc because uh, the unit disc is closed ok. Of course, when I say unit disc I am I am also including the boundary it is not the open unit disc ok. 
fine. So, I have gotten we have gotten hold of this sequence actually all right and uh, now the point is that we have uh, uh, so you know uh, what is our aim our aim is you have to get this uh, sequence of functions and you have to get this sequence of points such that and then you have to get a certain sequence of uh, radii okay such that the zoom functions they converge to a non-constant meromorphic function. So, where do you get those 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 uh, sequence of decreasing radii okay and that is uh, that comes uh, very simply. So, what you do is you put epsilon n to be 1 by f n hash of z n okay and then this this will go to this will of course go to 0 as it will go to 0 plus as n tends to infinity that is because the f n hash of z n, z n is going to plus infinity right. So, this this will serve as the uh, as the zooming radii. So, uh, now now we uh, now everything is in place we have gotten what we want okay and and so see uh, 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 so let me let me write this down uh, uh, since uh, R n is f n hash of z n times 1 minus mod z n uh, uh, what you will get is that you will get epsilon n R n is equal to 1 minus mod z n. Okay, because epsilon n is just defined to be 1 by f n hash of z n right and now what you do is that uh, you do the following thing uh, uh, you you put uh, 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 g uh, you, you you take the zoom functions okay. So, you take g n of zeta to be well uh, 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 f n uh, so it is just you, you zoom the function f n you zoom the function f n uh, centered at z n uh, uh, with a magnification factor 1 by epsilon n and use the variable zeta. So, this is going to be f n of z n plus uh, epsilon n times zeta. So, this is a zoom function this is a family of zoom functions okay. Mind you we have to find a family of zoom functions which converge normally uh, uh, to a non-constant meromorphic function this is this this will be that family okay and uh, where is this defined you see uh, you know uh, this this is defined uh, this is defined for uh, mod zeta lesser than r n. You see uh, the, the what is happening is that uh, uh, you you have so the so the diagram is like this you have you have this uh, unit disc uh, this is the origin uh, this is uh, this is one and then you have uh, uh, you have uh, z n somewhere here okay. Then you see if I, if you take this smaller disk centered at z1 zn, uh, its radius will be one minus mod zn. This radius will be one minus mod zn. But this one minus mod zn is, as I have written above, it is just epsilon n rn. Okay. So if I if I think of a zeta here, a variable zeta here, okay, then the uh, then uh, you know the maximum distance of zn to zeta can be uh, epsilon n rn. Okay, and that means that the the maximum value of zeta can be up to R n, because I, I have I have reduced, uh, you know, I have actually used the scaling factor, one by epsilon n. Okay, so, uh, but the point is, uh, look at these functions g n, the zoom functions. These zoom functions are defined on mod zeta less than R n, and mind you, R n tends to plus infinity. So what it means is that. As, as before you know the zoom functions are eventually defined on uh, any compact subset of the plane okay. So, uh, so g n uh, uh, is uh, defined uh, for uh, uh, n sufficiently large uh, on any compact subset subset of uh, co the complex plane and uh, here of course the complex plane you are looking at is the zeta plane mind you you have, you have, you have brought in this new new variable the zooming the zoomed variable zeta okay. So, uh, now the now the fact is that uh, uh, that g n you know uh, 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 g n does the job that is all you have to verify okay and how does one do that see uh, mind you uh, we want to show that you know uh, g n uh, converges normally to a non-constant meromorphic function. Okay, that is what we want to show that is the whole point. Now again use Marty's theorem see to after all g n are also meromorphic because g n are just you know obtained from f n by a translation and a scaling 
okay gn is just fn translated see you take the variable of the fn uh, okay and and you know uh, 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 you 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 translate that variable by minus z, by minus zn and then you divide by uh, scale it by 1 by epsilon and you you will get fn okay so fn's have been obtained from G, gn by uh, by a translation and a scaling so uh, gn's are also meromorphic okay and uh, well uh, and what am i trying to show i am trying to show that the gn's converge normally but again i can apply marty's theorem to show that the gn converge is converge normally i will have to only show that the gn's are normally uniformly bounded uh, i mean the spherical derivatives of the gn's are normally uniformly bounded okay so that's all that's what i check okay and that's very that's uh, just an estimate so uh, so how do i check that see you you will see that uh, 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 gn uh, hash uh, uh, so you know what will happen is gn hash of if you calculate gn hash of zeta this is a spherical derivative of gn uh, of zeta mind you this is uh, uh, so i'll have to take the spherical derivative of fn of zn plus epsilon n zeta so this is the spherical derivative i have to take okay but then taking the spherical derivative uh, you know will be the same as taking the spherical derivative of fn and then i'll get a multiplication factor epsilon n you know the spherical derivative will become smaller for the zoom function the spherical der derivative will become smaller by the by the uh, by the inverse of the zooming factor the zooming factor is 1 by epsilon n so the inverse of the zooming factor is epsilon n okay and so you know this is just chain rule of differentiation so this is epsilon n times fn hash of is it n plus epsilon n times zeta this is what you get all right and uh, now you see uh, what you must understand is that now i now uh, now i have a uh, uh, i have this uh, uh, this inequality because you know fn hash uh, 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 zn uh, times 1 minus mod zn is rn and that's the maximum value okay so so recall that uh, we have this de we have this definition of rn here rn is fn hash zn times 1 minus mod zn and mind you that is the maximum value uh, uh, of this quantity rn is actually the maximum value of fn hash multiplied fn hash of z multiplied by 1 minus mod z okay therefore uh, what you can see is that rn is certainly going to be greater than or equal to uh, the value of uh, fn hash uh, times 1 minus mod z for any uh, mod z uh, a, a for any z in the unit disk okay so i will put this for for z i will put this so so i i can put z n plus epsilon n zeta and here i will get z n plus epsilon n zeta so this is correct okay because uh, in fact when you put zeta equal to 0 this uh, it is the value on the right is actually r n r n is a maximum value so you have this but then uh, and, but you see uh, now i can use this to uh, to to get a uh, now i you know so this is the quantity here and this is the quantity that's appearing here okay which is uh, which multiplied by epsilon is gn ha hash of zeta so i can use this to get a bound for gn hash of zeta so what will i get i'll get gn hash of zeta uh, is uh, is equal to epsilon n times this but this thing in, a, in in this rectangle but this thing in this rectangle is less than or equal to r n by 1 minus uh, mod z n plus epsilon n zeta so i'll get this is less than or equal to epsilon n r n by 1 minus mod z n plus epsilon n zeta all right but then you see uh, triangle inequality mod z n plus epsilon n zeta is less than or equal to mod z n plus epsilon n mod zeta okay and therefore what i'll get is that uh, this is also less than or equal to epsilon n r n by 1 minus uh, mod z n minus epsilon n mod zeta I will get this right and now mind you uh, go back uh, so here is why this uh, proof is tricky this 1 minus mod z n uh, mind you is epsilon n r n okay that has to be trickily used so 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 this 1 minus mod z n I can put epsilon n r n then you can see this epsilon n is coming out both the numerator and denominator and get can gets cancelled so you see i get epsilon n r n by epsilon n uh, r n minus epsilon n mod zeta and and this becomes uh, that is less than or equal to r n 
by R n minus mod zeta okay and you see now uh, so this is what this is the uh, this is the estimate for the spherical derivative of g n right and see the point is that uh, if 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 uh, mod if mod zeta is less than say some r okay there exists an n large enough such that uh, uh, more uh, rn is going to be greater than r okay because after all the rn's uh, tend to plus infinity okay so uh, there is a beyond a beyond a certain stage uh, all the rn's are greater than r so that means that you know uh, you can you can so you know i can divide by rn and and and, and uh, let me put equal to here uh, i'll get uh, 1 by 1 minus mod zeta by uh, rn okay and uh, if mod zeta is less than r and rn is greater than r okay then uh, gn is defined on on mod zeta less than r okay then gn hash zeta is defined uh, on mod zeta less than r okay okay because mod zeta less than r contains is contained in mod zeta less than rn and mod zeta less than rn is the is the domain of gn okay so gn hash is defined and 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 in fact it's not only for n it's also for higher values of n okay so uh, so you know let me write gn hash of n plus uh, m uh, uh, m is equal to 1 uh, 0 1 2 and so on uh, so all these gn's are defined okay and the point is in any case uh, this quantity uh, this this th you get this estimate gn hash of zeta is bounded by 1 by 1 minus uh, r by rn which is bounded by 1 by 1 minus r okay so uh, and and finally i have i have gotten this 1 by 1 minus r uh, without uh, any condition on the subscript n small n okay and that's a uniform bound for gn beyond a certain stage uh, for the gn hash beyond a certain stage all right and that's it uh, now marty's theorem will tell you that gn hash has to therefore uh, uh, you know uh, it has to converge normally okay so uh, so by marty's theorem uh, gn uh, admits a subsequence that uh, converges normally on the whole complex plane okay and and uh, without loss of generality uh, of generality we may assume that uh, uh, this subsequence is g n itself okay so uh, after all i am interested in a convergent subsequent convergent sequence and what i have got is a sequence which i know admits a convergent subsequence so without loss of generality i re i replace the sequence by the convergent subsequence okay if i don't do this then i will have to use a double subscript uh, okay but it really doesn't matter but now this gn does the job because you see what happens is that uh, first of all uh, these this uh, you know this uh, tells you uh, this this bound on gn hash so what you do is now you you let uh, 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 you you let rn to uh, you let rn to tend to infinity okay then r by rn will go to zero okay so you let n tend to infinity then rn goes to infinity r by rn goes to zero and this quantity goes to one okay and that will tell you that uh, the all the gn hash uh, they are all bounded by one okay so uh, so clearly you get uh, all the g n hash uh, are all bounded by one that is one condition and uh, what is the other thing uh, what, ab what about g n hash of zero if you calculate g n hash of zero g n hash of zero uh, is going to be what uh, so let us go back to what this what uh, uh, we have here uh, uh, so go to this uh, uh, formula here you put zeta equal to zero g n hash of zero is epsilon n f n hash of zn but you see epsilon n fn hash of zn is 1 
because epsilon n is actually 1 by fn hash of zn. So, gn hash of 0 is actually 1 ok. So, that is a see that all these are all little tricks that have uh, I mean uh, they are all there ok you, you have to look at them ok that is the reason why this uh, proof is tricky. So, so this is actually 1 ok. So, uh, if uh, uh, the g n converge to g normally on c then uh, the g n hash of course converge to g hash uh, normally on c. So, uh, what this means is that if the since the g n hash are all bounded by 1 the limit g hash is also bounded by 1 and and since all the g n hash at 0 is equal to uh, are equal to 1 g hash also at 0 will be equal to 1 just by properties of limits and and you have done with the proof of Zalkman's lemma ok. And we have used Marty's theorem that is the whole point right. Now, uh, uh, what I want you to understand is that uh, 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 in the in this uh, Zalkman's lemma uh, you have uh, basically you have a condition for non normality of a family ok. And the fact is that the converse of Zalkman's lemma is also true. Namely if you have a family script f such that you are able to find a sequence z n tending to z naught and a sequence of radii epsilon n and also a sequence of functions such that, such that the zoom family converges normally to a non constant meromorphic function then the original family has to be uh, uh, not normal it has to be not in fact normality will be will be actually uh, you know uh, normality will be violated at the point z naught z naught is a point where normality of the family is violated ok. And uh, in what sense uh, this the point is that at z naught the, the the spherical derivatives become uh, as you approach z naught through via z n spherical derivatives become unbounded and and the unboundedness of the spherical derivatives is uh, is, is 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 the same as non normality because that is Marty's theorem ok. So, uh, so let me uh, uh, let me probably say uh, uh, note uh, give this as a note that uh, uh, note uh, the uh, the converse of Zalkman's lemma lemma is true is true uh, and why is that so uh, uh, for if uh, f is a family we such uh, such that there exists a sequence z n going to z naught with uh, and there are the sequence of radii going to uh, 0 with the zoomed functions and you have family of functions and there exists a sequence f n uh, family of functions in f such that uh, the zoomed functions g n uh, is equal which is a zooming of uh, f n centered at z n the magnification factor 1 by epsilon n uh, in the new variable zeta. Uh, suppose this goes normally converges to uh, g zeta on the complex plane with uh, g hash uh, of 0 equal to 1 and g hash is always less than or equal to 1. Suppose this happens ok then the family cannot be normal and why is that true that is very very simple because you see uh, uh, then uh, then script f is not normal. Why is that true it is very simple because you know uh, g n hash of zeta as I as we just calculated uh, we have seen this is epsilon n times f n hash of uh, you know z n plus epsilon n zeta you know this and put zeta equal to 0 what you will get is g n hash of 0 is equal to epsilon n uh, into f n hash of z n ok. But you see g n hash of 0 uh, g hash of 0 is 1 ok and g n hash take, uh, goes to g ok. So, g n hash goes to 
g hash of 0 which is 1 okay. So, uh, if you take the and mind you all these epsilon n's are going to 0 okay. Uh, so, this happens as n tends to infinity okay. So, what will it mean? See uh, the uh, you have a product of two quantities one of them is going to 0, but the product is bounded that means the other has to go to infinity. So, what it what 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 you will get is that so this implies that this has to go to plus infinity okay and what does that mean? It means that you have violated uh, the family uh, the sequence f n has violated the conditions of Marty's theorem. You 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 find you found functions which uh, whose spherical derivatives are going to plus infinity. The spherical derivatives are not bounded, and where is this happening? See, fn hash the spherical derivative of fn at zn is becoming larger and larger and larger, going to plus infinity, and the zn's are approaching z naught. Okay, mind you, zn's are all approaching z naught. So what's happening is that if you look at a compact neighborhood of z naught, an open disk, uh, a closed disk containing z naught, you see that on that compact uh, neighborhood okay uh, these f n hashes are not going to be bounded uniformly because they are going to plus infinity and now Marty's theorem will tell you therefore that this uh, this even the even the f n's that sequence itself as a family is not normal okay. So, that implies not normality. So, the converse of Zalk Zalkman's lemma is also true. So, Zalkman's lemma is actually an if and only if condition okay, but the beautiful thing is that beautiful thing about the lemma is that you if you get a non norm if, if a family is not normal your the lemma is able to guarantee the existence of a non normal point and a non normal sequence at that point okay. You get both the point and uh, a sequence uh, that violates normality okay. So, uh, what is now left is that I will have to use this uh, uh, to uh, prove uh, Picard's theorems and uh, uh, we will do that in the coming lectures. So, let me write this here. Uh, so, this implies uh, by Marty's theorem that f n hence f is not normal at z. Okay. So, uh, I will stop here.